hello and welcome to part 2 of comparing functionalities of Procreate with Affinity Designer. Today we will be talking about outlines. A quick disclaimer, I am not an expert in any of those programs and you can achieve a similar or same results using both of them. I am just sharing my workflow and what works for me. However, by showing my process, I do hope that you will learn something new or have an idea of how to speed up your own workflow or making it more efficient. If you've ever made a sticker to use on a cutting machine or had to add text to your map and it just looks lost and you end up erasing the background line work or creating a separate layer to make it pop, you know exactly what I mean. Shape or text outline is useful when you either need the extra space around your design or you want to ensure it's visible and popping without the background graphing obscuring it. I use outlining for my maps, stickers and bookmarks, just to name a few. So how both Procreate and Affinity compare when it comes to this functionality? Well, in Procreate you'd have the design and you could create an outline in a couple of ways. The two I've used were to outline yourself or use the blurring effect. Now, I'm sure there are other ways to create an outline, but those were the most popular two I could find when I was learning the program. The first one would be to just use a monoline brush with maximum streamline and some stabilization. You'd create a layer behind the design and you'd run your pencil on the edge to create as even as you could outline. I hated this method because my outlines always looked wonky and uneven and it would take me so much time that I just knew there must be a better way. The second technique I see people use is to apply blurring effect. For that you would duplicate the layer with your design, switch the alpha lock on, change it to white by choosing the white color and clicking on fill layer. And now you use Gaussian Blur to create a blooming that will go beyond the original design, creating a background. After that, you select the blurred shape with color fill turned on to fill it with white. You can then adjust it how much of that fill you want to cover. Once done, you can then fill any spaces that the blurring has not caught. This technique, however, creates quite pixelated effect that can mess with your cutting machine or make your work look low quality. For the fantasy maps, you also have two most popular options. The first one, which I don't recommend, but I have seen people use and recommend on the internet, is to erase the line work below the text. I mean, why would you want to erase something you've spent time creating? Also, if possible, always, and I mean always, use the non-destructive ways of adding something to your work. The second way of doing it would be to create a text layer for the names, duplicate it and then convert it into raster, then use the blurring method on raster layer to create the background effect. This way you can still move the name around if need be or if you don't like the placement of it. You just have to remember to move the background too. This would be my preferred method of doing it in Procreate as it doesn't affect the picture beneath it. However, I no longer have to deal with the limited options in Procreate as I now use Affinity Designer in 100% of the cases where I need to add text or an outline. First, let me show you the outline functionality for designs. In Affinity Designer, all you do is add an outline effect to a layer or a group of elements. Ensure it's all either grouped together or on a separate layer and then you add the outline effect. Set the thickness and color of it and you're pretty much done. You end up with a smooth edge with no pixelation and uniform thickness all around. And you don't even have to create your graphics in Affinity either. As long as you export your work as a PNG with a transparent background, you can import it into Affinity Designer and add an outline to any of your previous works. Here I made a quick shape in Procreate on transparent background and exported it as a PNG. Now I can import it into Affinity and add the outline effect. Here 
Here you go, a perfect outline. Now the only thing you should be careful with in this method is the fact that sometimes when you make more painterly designs you can leave residual pixels in your graphics. They are hard to spot, however Affinity Designer will see them and create an outline of it. You can go into a pixel persona and erase them if something like this happens to you. The best part of using the outline effect is that you can also apply it to a text without converting it to a raster first. So you can change the font, size or type a completely new name and the effect will reapply itself automatically. This is the best way, according to me, of adding text to your map. Where in Procreate I would have to create a background layer with the outline or I would have to erase the line work underneath the text to ensure it's not obscured. Here I can use it dynamically and in a non-destructive way. If I wanted to move that name later on or change it, I could easily do it without worrying about recreating the line work or the background. It also requires fewer steps to create it and therefore is more efficient. In Affinity Designer, all you do is add the outline with the color of your choice. You can also set up lower opacity to ensure your text is still visible, but with the added benefit of seeing some of the map in the background, you can create curved or wavy text with the same effects applied. I know a lot of people who create their maps in Procreate, but then export their work to Photoshop as it offers way more options in text creation. Well, this is similar, you just don't have to pay monthly subscriptions for Affinity and you get the same results. You create a line you want your text to follow and you add it on. Then you can modify, move and change it as you want without messing with any of the artwork beneath it. In my opinion, it's so much easier and faster to use an outline in Affinity than try to create one in Procreate. The last tip to tie this all down is layer adjustments. Now let's say you've made a beautiful map in Procreate, it's full of blended painterly effects and shadows, you export it to Affinity to add names, frames and final touches. You print it and the colors just don't look good. Go to the map layer in Affinity, select it and then add the required adjustment. If it's too dark or the colors look flat, adjust the brightness and contrast. If some of the colors look weird, you can have the entire arsenal of options here to choose from and fix it. And unlike Procreate, if you're unhappy with any of the adjustments, you can go back into them and amend them, or you can remove them completely and start over. Nothing gets lost and you don't need to remember to make a copy if you want to revert anything to the original state. I will be talking more about adjustments in the future videos. So that's it for today. I hope you learned something new. If you have, please like and subscribe. Have a great time creating and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.